I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and before we get into today's Chemnitz Dialogue recap, I have an exciting announcement to make. If you head over to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, you can now pre-order a fun little mystery Valentine's Day bundle from me to you. It's a really great way to treat yourself or another yarn loving friend. The Valentine's Day yarn will come wrapped with a sticker, a progress keeper, and a handmade Valentine by me. And I'm very excited with the design that I'm doing this year. You can watch the yarn dyeing in an episode of Dye Pot Weekly that will come out on February 14th. Uh, it's a Tuesday this year uh, and so it's just a lot of fun and I'm really really excited. The yarn is uh, sitting on the stove right now. All of the Valentine's Day yarn will ship by the end of January so it has the best chance to arrive to you in time for Valentine's Day. You can find more information at a link down in the video description. And now let's go look at the beautiful yarn that I dyed in November 2022 which is also now in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop uh, as part of this big shop update. Hi everyone I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and it's time to finally finally recap the yarn that I dyed in the November 2022 Chemnitz Dye Along livestream. A couple months ago I picked an inspiration photo of this gorgeous palm tree silhouette in front of a vibrant vivid sunset and I was really excited to create some colorways inspired by this beautiful image. Now before we dive in a bit more to this recap I have a huge confession to make. I am filming this recap in January. Normally I try to film the recap from the dialogues as soon as the yarn is dry because that way everything I did is still fresh in my mind. And unlike when I'm editing a video and therefore I go through all the footage and sometimes film the conclusions after that, I'm not going to go back and watch the whole live stream to remember exactly what I did here. But I may need to go back because this purple orange pink gradient is amazing. I love it. What I do remember vividly is that the main technique that we used in the stream to create all these colorways was dip dyeing. And I believe that the orange is a color that I mixed with yellow and pink. I think probably deep magenta and brilliant yellow. And I think the purple was probably electric violet. But you'll have to go back and watch the live stream if you want to fact check me. The first colorway that I'm showing here is definitely not how I expected this to end up because I think that my original plan was to create this backdrop and then speckle on top of it. But I loved this so much that I couldn't bring myself to add any speckles to it. And I decided even though there's a vision for a final product, I should just stop because I adore this. I created this vivid colorway with dip dyeing. Um, I think we dip dyed into three different colors, the middle into our pink, one end into the purple, and then the other end into the more orange color to give us those colors from the sunset. This yarn base is Knit Pick Stroll Glimmer. It is 70% Superwash Merino wool, 25% nylon, 5% silver Selena. And I love the way the little hint and sparkle to it gives this image of the first and last, first or last rays of light that you saw. In December, I actually went on vacation in Hawaii and we saw some amazingly, unbelievably vivid sunrises. Even though we were on the western side of the island, just the sun rising above the mountain just gave these beautiful colors in the sky. And I'll probably throw some images up that I took while I was on vacation. I think I spoke about this a few times during Hanukkah, but sometimes, you know, when you are dyeing a colored way and you have a vision, it's okay to stop when you hit something in the middle that you love. But occasionally I do continue to push on and keep going. And I do believe that there is something here that I would be able to reproduce. I just loved it so much that I was not sure how I would feel adding some darker speckles on top of it. But we had other yarn that we dip dyed. And that is these two sock blanks that I dyed. These double stranded sock blanks are Stroll sock blanks from Knit Picks, 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. I dip dyed these in the same colors in the same kind of way. But then during the live stream, one of them 
I took, I think it was blued steel. I don't think it was a black, I think it was a blue. And I speckled just along one side, doing a sort of abstract version of what this colorway felt like. And this one, because the blank started unraveling itself a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and unravel um, in a moment for this recap. But the second blank, I went a little more literal and I freehand painted some palm fronds on it using dye mixed with guar gum. And I was really happy that I took the time to do that, but part of me also just loved the blank as a gradient that it was. And so, would you like to see me do some more dip dyeing of sock planks? I'm trying to think if I've done something like this in a standalone video. I know I've done this in live streams multiple times, but if that's something that you would like to see me do again, please let me know and I can make a full video on it. And here is what our gradient with the speckles on the side looks like unraveled. You can get more of a sense about how those variegated, it's going to be almost a variegated patch of the speckles, which in theory could pool a little bit depending on your gauge and what you're knitting, but most likely they'll end up being a little bit more randomly distributed. It honestly feels a little bit like static lines a little bit through the background. You'll also notice that we have modeling of each of the colors. That's from the resist that we get from the stitches in the blank, uh, but I think it adds like a wonderful depth to the yarn. And of course, the very best part about dyeing a double-stranded blank is that you get these matched gradients. So wherever the purple starts to transition more into the pink, however long that takes or short it takes or whatever variegated sections it goes through, it's going to be the same on both of these skeins. So you can end up with a perfectly matched pair of socks um, or, you know, symmetrical product or matched mittens or something like that. Now, coming out of a sock length, the yarn does have a crimp to it. So I will go and soak this yarn and let it dry uh, to relax that crimp a little bit. Um, but otherwise, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous gradient yarn. I'm not going to unravel the palm frond blank. It will look very, very similar to the other speckly one because these darker sections of the palm fronds will end up appearing like speckles. If I take it and move it around, you can see that each black section is small with the orange separating it. The one main difference is on the other blank, the speckles were on almost every single row. And here there's some rows where there's no speckles and where they are placed, it's a little bit more random. So it's probably a little less likely to have any kind of pooling quality to it. But again, it depends on what you're making with the yarn in the end. This skein of Knitpick Swish DK, which is just 100% Superwash Merino, I believe was a yarn mop for some of that dip dyeing. I think it first went into pink and then some of the purple and some of the orange. And I think I speckled with the blued steel on it before doing the speckles on the blank to make sure I liked the color on top of the orange and that it felt okay. At least that's what I think I did. <laughs> and then finally, we have a tonal purple here, which I must have had some leftover purple dye behind that I had measured out or something. Uh, because this is, well, it's beautiful, but it's just a simple tonal on the sparkle base. It's such a pretty purple color. But yeah, I, I honestly don't have a lot of recollection of dyeing this one, but I love it. It is a hair darker than a lavender, but still is in that more pastel reaching family. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm very happy to announce that the Chemnitz Dye Along is back in January 2023. At the time I'm filming this, I have not yet selected the photo, but I have a feeling that by the time I edit this tomorrow, I may have picked a photo. So maybe there'll be one here right now, or maybe not. <laughs> but in general, around approximately the 15th of the month, I try to release a new Dye Along photo. And the whole fun of it is that we can dye along together based on the inspiration photo. And it's fun to see how other dyers may have a similar or different take to the colors. And so I'm so excited to show some of the submissions from the November dye along here. Thank you so much to everyone who has participated. And I cannot wait to see what we're all gonna dye up in January. I really like this color combination. I enjoy how bright and happy the colors are. And 
the thing with these dye wands is a lot of times I play with colors and I'm like, I need to do that more. I want to play with that more. And that's just a really good and happy thing. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe so that way you don't miss any of my videos and turn on notifications because that will also help make sure you don't miss whenever a live stream happens. I do try to plan the die long live streams in advance and have that scheduled when I share the new photo, but sometimes I do go live a little bit more last minute and it's a little more spontaneous and so having your notifications on can help you make sure you can join while I'm live. Thank you so much for watching.